is a beautiful morning. At least it feels like fall in the mornings. It may not feel like it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, gosh, the mornings just don't get much better than this. So everybody's enjoying? Your yard is growing or maybe having a few problems or a few other things. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that's just things you need to do and uh, things that it's time to do, things that uh, you might want to think about doing this fall. And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but anybody that hasn't fertilized your lawn yet, what are you waiting for? Your grass, your trees, your shrubs, everything else needs to be fed, especially this fall, because with all the rain over the spring and summer months, the plants grew so much that they simply used up all the nutrients that were there. Yeah, everybody's grinning. I know who didn't, who hasn't fertilized yet. You know, I ended up feeding and, oh gosh, I put an extra application on uh, in August, but my grass all summer, I mowed about three times as often as I usually do, and plants just grew so much. Everybody talks about how much their trees grew, how much their shrubs grew, how much the grass grew. Stop and think about it. It took some nutrient for that to happen. The plants have used up, excuse me, more nutrient than usual. And it's having all those sugars in the sap. It's having that food reserve that makes things more cold hardy. And uh, it is important to get fertilizer on whenever you can. It's never too early or too late. But when you fertilize, you increase the sugar content of the sap and somebody wants to do a good experiment, you can uh, put sugar in water and then start, you know, testing freezing temperatures. The more sugar you put in water, the colder it has to be before it freezes. And your plants are the same way. I guess, I don't know about y'all, but as a kid, I remember putting too much sugar in the popsicles, sticking them in the freezer, and they never froze. They were just always slush. That's what sugar does. It works as a kind of antifreeze. And the sugars in plant sap work the same way. Feeding in the fall makes your plants more cold hardy if we get that hard freeze. Now, I'm not going to go out on that lamb. Who thinks we're going to have a mild winter? Anybody want to go out on that lamb? Who thinks we're going to have a cold winter? Last winter, we had a very mild winter except for one day or two days. And those days were very cold. I wouldn't chance it. I would, uh, you know, definitely get some fertilizer out. And if you're feeding grass, trees, shrubs, things like that, feeding once in the fall is enough to carry you through till next spring. If you are planting colorful things, the dianthus, the petunias, uh, the snapdragons this time of year, and when it cools down a little bit more, planting the pansies and cyclamen, keep feeding those things all winter long. Something like the color essentials, this stuff works real well. But if you really want to get the maximum flowering out of things, use this about every four to six weeks all winter. Those plants are growing through the winter months and so they need to be fed. By the same token, even though I understand they're available at some of the uh, places around town that shall remain nameless that try to masquerade as nurseries, have their pansies, have their cyclamen out, don't plant them yet. When you put them out, when it is this hot, they will get spider mites, they will stretch, they'll get leggy, they just never really recover. We need to have times when the temperature is staying down no warmer than about 80 degrees. We need to have those night temperatures consistently into the 50s and low 60s. When that happens, it will be time to put out the cyclamen and the pansies and things like that. We won't have them until then, and I sure would strongly suggest that you uh, don't shop the places that do, because you put them out too early, they just <coughs> never really recover. But anyway, fall fertilizing is critically important, and uh, your plants will really appreciate it if you do it. What do you use? I like the Medina Granular. This is what I use on literally just about everything, including the vegetable garden like we talked about last week. Uh, some people, it's a poultry litter base is what it is. Some people say, well, I don't want to use any manure product out there. We'll get the Texas Tea. It's an alfalfa-based product, and it works very well. There are other good ones out there. The uh, Ladybug is a good fertilizer. It's just substantially more expensive for basically the same nutrient. Come on in, guys. Not you. You can go back to work. my fertilizer in August. When will you do your next 
soon as I have time to. I mean, you'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it again. Uh, it's just you. It's hard to overdo with the organic products, and sure, it hurts in the pocketbook. But I get the broken bags that uh, the guys get careless with. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did mine August. I just didn't know when. To yeah. Do Most years I would not have done it in August. Most years I would fertilize probably in February, then June or July, and then fertilize again in you know September, October. This year, I just looked at the amount of uh, the growth things we're making and decided it would be a good idea to feed again. Feed again. Uh, the couple of areas, I've got a small inner yard and I've got a big outer yard. I didn't fertilize the whole day outer yard. It's definitely a little yellower than the areas that I fed are. That's the other thing I love about the uh, Medina product is they put that uh, super finely ground green sand in, so it greens things up better than just about anything else that I've seen. So anyway, I, uh, I definitely would fertilize if you fed in August. I'd probably do it again sometime at the end of this month. The other thing that you may want to think about doing that we don't normally worry about doing in the fall unless we're just trying to soften the soil, but thatch may be a problem. Thatch is rarely a problem in an organic lawn because it breaks down so quickly with all the microbes that are out there. But if you're digging around in your grass, get down on your hands and knees and look. If you really see a layer of grass clippings building up, uh, then spray it down with some Medina Plus or maybe put a little dry molasses or something like that down. Again, normally that's not a problem, but this year things just put on so much more growth than they normally do through the summer months that uh, I know my grass in my yard, I've got a pretty good little layer of uh, clippings decomposing down there and I sprayed it down with Medina Plus you can already see it starting to go away and remember Medina Plus isn't a fertilizer it's something that stimulates microbial activity and will help break it down the other option if you want to do something a little differently the compost tea that we brew on the weekends if you will put it out promptly this will be a real good substitute for the Medina Plus because what it is is just a super concentration of the microbes that tend to break down and decompose, you know, all the different uh, things in the soil tend to counteract a lot of diseases and other things. But uh, either the Medina Plus or the compost tea, I think, would be would be a good thing to do this fall, just because there's so much more organic material on the surface than usual. Yes, ma'am. What happens if you don't use the compost tea right away? What if you wait like a week? pour it out. It goes bad. It, the difference in compost tea and what we might call compost leachate, uh, if you just soak compost in water, you would get what we call compost leachate. And that is a lot of microbes and things that have simply come out of the compost. And that could stay for a while. But the difference, the thing that makes compost tea much more potent, so to speak, is we're adding stimulants that encourage, come on in, that encourage the uh, bacteria especially to reproduce at a high rate. To reproduce at a high rate, they need lots of oxygen. That's why if you go up and look at our compost tea maker, it looks like the ocean.